So in this video, I would like to show you how to process <clears throat> the CRTM data from the USGS Earth Explorer uh, into a 3D model and you make a very simple visualization using the ArcGIS Pro. So at first, here we have the USGS Earth Explorer home site and uh, I would like today to work uh, with a uh, uh, very uh, with two very interesting sites with the Grand Canyon and with the Zion National Park. So the USGS offers a wide range of data sets, but today we will focus on uh, the digital elevation model which can be found here, but we are looking for the CRTM shuttle radar topography mission, which is here. So and here you can see the coverage. We are talking about one arc second global data because these data are uh, of 30 meter resolution, almost 30 meter resolution. Uh, the Grand Canyon is covered by the great uh, 30 times 35 meters. So here you can see the coverage except the northern hemisphere, the part of the northern hemisphere. So here we are fully covered. Okay, so at first you have to search for the data. So we are trying to find the Grand Canyon which is here. So let's zoom in. And here we can or we have to uh, decide the area we, we, are, we would like to search data for. So here I just delete this and I click on use map. So it means that this area will be used as a search for my data. Uh, you can uh, resize the area somehow, uh, but uh, uh, this is what would be like. So then we go to datasets, we check that we are looking for this data and we just look and we see the results. So here are two datasets fitting our area of interest. Here we can check the footprint. So here is one grid and here is the other one. We can have a slight preview of the data. As you can see here that uh, both these data sets fit our area. So then if you would like to download them, so then here you go to download options and here we may choose what we want to download. Uh, the best for work with ArcGIS is a GeoTIFF as you will download it as a GeoTIFF as it is. So uh, you don't have to border with it almost at all. So that's the GeoTIFF. Uh, I won't log in because I have already downloaded the data, but please do so. So now we will have a look in the ArcGIS Pro. So here I will insert a new map. And then we will navigate to our folder with our data stored. So we have a look in the catalog pane. Here is just the scratch folder created with my project. So I would like to navigate to my work project. That I have on my drive. That's it. I, if I do right click, I make it, we can make it the default. And then if we use this, so it, then the folder will be added to every new. Uh, to every new project we create and so we don't have to bother to uh, to add it, add it again. Okay, so here I have the data. 
I have this geotiff of the Zion National Park. As you can see, is the same size as the Grand Canyon grid uh, we check at USGS website because it's uh, it's very close to it, right? If uh, we would like to open a base map that will show us what's exactly here, so we can add a base map. So here is here's a Zion National Park. It's almost like in Jurassic Park if you are visiting there, just waiting the dinosaurs to show up. Okay, so now what can we do with this? We have a grid that's great, and uh, we would like to make a visualization. I'm not sure if I will be able to uh, if I will be able to visual visualize such a large area. But we can try. Here I have prepared design texture, uh, a just small piece. I'm oh, sorry, just a small piece of the Zion National Park. Uh, Geotext and export it from the ArcGIS Pro. And now we would like to turn the scene into 3D. So here we just go to insert. Here we switch from the new local scene. And the new local scene will be added. Well, my computer has actually a bit lack of operation memory. So I am afraid that it may not work very fast. So now we just drag in my design texture. And let's see what's going to happen. Nothing, because we have to try to go to zoom to layer first. And what we see here is transforming into 3D. That's great, because I have here the elevation surfaces and we have here world elevation 3D terrain 3D. Uh, it's a global model of the whole world that ESRI, uh, that ESRI uh, offers to us. You can see the, the gray 3D model here around. So here you can see the 3D design. But what if I would like to use my own data and I don't want to use the S3's world service because my data are more accurate or more detailed. So let's say that we just delete this, do remove. Now it just disappears because there is no elevation source, but you see now it's completely flat because there is no elevation source for the texture. But I have my Zion GeoTiff from the USGS service. So I put it in. Uh, this wasn't I meant, but we can go right click and add elevation, add elevation source. And this elevation source, maybe we can just drag it. Let's try it. Yeah, we can just drag it like this. Okay, now just give us a second, and here we go. Here we have again our 3D Zion National Park, which is awesome. Okay, now back to the Grand Canyon. So we just can close this. This is my map, so I Close it well. I open new map. And here we go. Uh, what I have done here is I have taken the Grand Canyon uh, TIFF like the Zion and I have extracted points out of it. So here I have just points. Just to show you how other uh, interpolation techniques work within the JS Pro. If you zoom closely in, we can see that it is a set of points and uh, every point uh, represents uh, the center of the cell that used to be 
uh, in the grid. If we, if we measure the distances, so we see it's 30 meters because I don't have a snapping so available. Is 30 by 38 meters. So the result is not square, but it's fine. It's okay. So now what we can what can we do with the points? A very effective tool for interpolation is to create a tin. Okay, so let's make a tin. So let's go to analysis tools and here let's search for the function create tin. So here let's define the output tin. And my output tin will be a Grand Canyon tin. Let's say the coordinate system we say is the same as here and uh, input features are the points the height field is a grid code because I have created points out of the grid and if you do this let's check the attribute table then the information that was formerly uh, in the grid in the cell is in the attributes as a grid code so there's the elevation elevation and is a mass point so that's it we click run and just wait let's wait for the tin to be created so the tin is here And here it is, the tin created from my points. It's awesome, isn't it? Now let's insert a new local scene. And let's add my tin to this local scene. Come on. Here is there as the elevation source, but let's try to put it to my layers. And there we go. So that's my tin of the Grand Canyon. Okay, and now what if I would like to have a texture of the Grand Canyon like I had a Zion? So we can get rid of this, get rid of this. We have a look in my map. Here are the points, and here I have the texture. See? Here I have a texture with the river, or that is a topographical map, and here I have oh, where it is. It's somewhere lost. Yeah, but there's a problem with the georeferencing. So the orthophoto isn't working, so we can try to make it again. Never mind. Okay, but here I have here I have the map, the topographical map of the Grand Canyon, and the points. So I can use let's say function topo to raster. A very popular function for raster interpolation. So here we go. Let's say Grand Canyon Web Mercator 
where the grid code is elevation type as uh, point elevation the output will be Grand Canyon BEM and as we have seen that we can make 30 meters cell size because the resolution is 30 by almost 30 meters and just give it some time for inner revelation. So when it's finished, we can do another type of analysis. We can compute a hill shade uh, out of it to see how uh, how detailed uh, the model is. Okay, the 30 meter resolution uh, is not very detailed. But anyway, is it can be well used for visualization worldwide. The these data are for free, so don't expect centimeter resolution. But it's still awesome that you can make three model of any place in Europe, America, Africa, everywhere, and it's all for free. So here we go. The raster interpolation is running. Uh, uh, the smaller the cell size is, uh, the longer it takes the interpolation. So uh, you have to come with this, and it's not reasonable to make a one grid, one meter grid resolution out of this 30 uh, meter spaced points. So we are almost done, and here we go. Here we have the elevation grid and uh, we can try the hill shade function just to see our result so we take dm we say that dm shade it oh shade it boop, boop, boop. here you can change the azimuth or altitude oh, we, we don't do this now let's have a look on our Shade it. Oh, you can see it looks quite good. You can see the stripes a bit, but I think that is because these data were collected by the CRTM uh, interferometry, a router interferometry sensor. That that could be why. Okay, so now if you would like to make the visualization, so here we have the scene. So and. Uh, ground we just bring in we just bring in the ground canyon dem yes but it has been added to to the layers which we don't want to anyway now is there and now we take the texture the topographical map and is automatically mapped over our surface. And I think it looks quite awesome. And it's just so you can see that we could have make it bigger because our uh, elevation surface with gray mountains around are larger. So we can try to add a base map. To the scene it should be possible so let's say that we would like to add this just wait and as you can see that where our elevation surface is we have the texture just wait till it's drawn to the full detail so, and what do you think? I think that it's really awesome. You can make it 3D model, such a detailed 3D model of any place, almost any place in the world. Okay, guys, so that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we'll come back to my next video.